Hey, what's up everyone? Another one of my most requested videos is how do I edit my colors? And today we will be talking about five tools that I like to use in Photoshop to help make my colors pop. I will be making a Lightroom version soon, but today I really do hope you guys find these five tools super helpful and without further ado, let's get started. The first one is a curves adjustment which in my opinion has to be one of the most underrated and I feel like it's underrated and overlooked because it's not even a color adjustment. I'm gonna start by bringing up the exposure and then bringing down the highlights so they don't get blown out. And then I'm gonna create a second curves adjustment and this time bring down the exposure just a bit and also bring down the shadow so it creates more contrast. Right away you guys can see how it drastically changes how the colors pop. In case you guys really want to make your colors pop even more, you can go ahead and keep bringing down that shadow pointer to add more contrast. One thing that I've learned is that by exposing and contrasting certain portions of your photos, you can really make those colors pop. So, so far, I do hope you guys like this first tool, and now let's move on to the second one. The second tool you could use is the curves adjustment, but this time we will not be affecting the contrast, but instead we're going to be working on the red, greens, and blues. Just like color grading works in Premiere, this adjustment allows you to change the color temperature of your photo, which I've noticed can really set the mood for the rest of the edit. Because I've noticed for myself that the tint I add really has a big influence on how I end up editing and treating the rest of the photo. I know this is going to sound funny, but it's so true. Just like J. Cole says, the good thing is you came a long way, the bad thing is you went the wrong way. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because it can definitely set the mood for the rest of the edit and sometimes you'll really end up liking the photo because it came out hell of fire but sometimes it's just not what you expected and although you may have edited for a long time and to just end up not liking it, never get discouraged because trust me, it's good. You start learning what works and then maybe in the future that certain look may work for a different photo. Just know we never lose, we just learn and it's a never ending learning process. Process. So I like to start with the red adjustment and then if I see that it's becoming too sensitive when I'm barely moving it up and down, I do change the opacity and I bring that down so it also brings down the sensitivity. Now as I move the pointer around, I try to see what's going to be complementing my photo and what's not going to be working. And once I'm pretty happy with the tint that I'm getting, I do move on to the greens. As you guys can see with the greens, as I'm bringing it down, it does add magentas and when I push it up, it does add greens. And one thing I'm really liking that I'm seeing is that when I'm pushing that shadow pointer down, it is adding magenta to the jersey, which I think complements the outfit a lot better. And now as we're getting to the blues and I'm pushing those blues up, you guys can see how it does add a cooler temperature to it. And in my opinion, this does complement the pink a lot better. Now when we get into the shadows, I am going to put some blues in there as well by pushing that shadow pointer up. Now with the before and after, you guys can see the big difference it does make just to add a tint to your photo because it can definitely add way more potential to the rest of the edit. The third tool you can use is the hue and saturation adjustment. I never work on the master slider which affects all the colors. Instead, I work on individual colors because it gives you so much more control. This adjustment allows you to change the hue, the saturation, and also the lightness of the color. So I start with the reds and then I work my way down the rest of the color list. Now as I'm saturating the yellows, you can see how it does help bring up the exposures in the grass and also in the building in the background. The saturation tool is so helpful because you can easily just control it by sliding this pointer over and start to make those colors pop. Now as we move on to cyan and you see me start to saturate or desaturate the colors, you can see that the blues do get added to the sweater which I think looks good and adds to the background. When you want to make a color more dominant, you can saturate it or if you feel like a certain color is distracting, then you can desaturate it and tone it down. Now let me saturate the magenta so you can see the big change we are going to make with the hue slider. Which I think can really become helpful because as you move the slider around, you can manipulate colors that were originally there and change the pigment to better complement your photo. The fourth tool you can use is the selective color adjustment. Unlike the hue and saturation tool, this adjustment also lets you change the color, the tints, and exposure of your whites, which are your highlights, your neutrals, which are your midtones, and your blacks, which are your shadows. And of course, it also lets you change it for all the other colors as well, which is probably why it's one of my most favorite color adjustments to use. With the whites, you can see that if I overexpose it, those highlights do get blown out in the sweater. And if I underexpose it, we are going to get more detail back in that sweater. What's really sick is that you can start adding colors to your highlights. If I move this slider pointer to the right, we're going to start getting some blues in those highlights. And if we move it to the left, we're going to start getting red. You can work your way down these pointers to see what works with your colors and how you can add different colors to your highlights, which is really nice. 
Now, working on the neutrals, if you slide the blast pointer to the right, you can see that we do bring the exposure down, and if we move it to the left, we brighten up those midtones, which both really affect the contrast. I'll be adding a bit more contrast and then moving the other color pointers around until I feel satisfied with the result I'm getting, and I continue to do this with each color. Now I'm going to apply the same concept to the blacks and then I'm going to keep moving on to each individual color and do the same thing. Now the biggest difference between this and the hue and saturation tool is that the hue and saturation tool you can easily just manipulate that color but when it comes to selective color we don't really manipulate it as much but instead we add more tint to the color. Also in the hue and saturation they let you saturate that color easily by sliding the slider over whereas the selective color you can either overexpose it or underexpose it which does end up making an effect on how those colors pop. The fifth tool is the color balance tool, which I like to save for last because this tool lets you change the temperature in your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. Another reason why I like to save this tool for last is because if I notice that my photo has too much of a warm temperature and I don't like it as much, I could cool it down using this adjustment. As you're moving the sliders around and figuring out which colors do work better with your photo, you'll also notice that certain colors do add more contrast to your photo. And if you already have an idea of what temperature you're trying to go for, whether it's a cooler temperature or a warmer temperature, you can go ahead and start moving these sliders to the warmer colors or the cooler colors to get that look. The difference between this one and selective color is that the color balance adjustment affects all the colors in the shadows, while selective color only affects individual colors, which is the biggest difference. Now this wraps it up for the 5 tools you can use to enhance your colors in Photoshop. I hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and also feel free to subscribe for more future content. Let me know which one was your favorite color adjustment and I do hope you guys try these out on your next photos. And I will be making a video on how I edited this photo but I first want to drop this one because a couple of the tools that I will be using in that video have now been introduced in this video. Thanks again for watching guys and I hope to catch you guys on the next one. Alright, peace.